In today's video, we're going to continue on our series where we're covering all 31 NHL teams, recapping their 17-18 season, and looking ahead to the 2018 offseason, discussing what we should expect from these teams to get ready for next season. Today's team we're discussing is the Tampa Bay Lightning. And that's coming up next. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams. So if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So as I mentioned off the top, today we're discussing the Tampa Bay Lightning. We're going to do a quick recap here of their 17-18 season and look ahead as to what we should expect from this team heading into the offseason here to get ready for next season. Now, obviously, as we know, the Tampa Bay Lightning had a fantastic season, winning the Atlantic Division and one of the top teams in the NHL. They finished with a record of 54-23-5 for 113 points. Unfortunately, they ended up coming up short in the playoffs. I'm sure their ultimate goal here was to get back to the Stanley Cup Finals and have a chance to bring the Stanley Cup home back to Tampa Bay. Uh, but they came up short in the Conference Finals against the Washington Capitals. Still an incredible season, nothing to be ashamed of, but I'm sure they would have been more pleased uh, making it a little bit further considering how this team is built. They're certainly built to win now, and their window is certainly open uh, for winning the Stanley Cup here for quite some time. So there's lots of... Uh, to be optimistic about moving forward as well. They ended up scoring 290 goals forward, which is an incredible feat. Uh, first in the NHL, so the top scoring NHL team this past year. They allowed 234 goals against, which puts them at 13th, uh, which is still not too shabby. Taking a quick look here at special teams, their power play was 23.9, which was third best in the NHL, so that was an excellent uh, result for sure. It certainly wasn't great for the uh, Lightning this year was the PK. The PK was 76.1%, which put them 28th best in the NHL, so that's certainly an area of focus moving forward, I'm sure, as well as their face-offs. The face-offs weren't that great. They finished with a, a face-off winning percentage of 48.2, which is 27th best in the league. So obviously penalty killing and face-offs were not their strength this past year. Um, I think they got by a lot on mainly on their offense. It saved them a lot of times. Uh, they obviously had pretty good defense. Their goals, goals against were not bad at all. A lot of their goals against were certainly probably a result of not winning enough face-offs and not having a very good PK. So we'll see how this team moves forward here, but certainly those are areas of focus uh, to get better for next year. Now let's jump into some of the individual results. There's all kinds of guys on this team that had fantastic seasons. Uh, so there's lots of bright spots, lots of players to be quite optimistic about moving forward. Obviously, Stamkos and Kucherov both had awesome years. Uh, we saw Nikita Kucherov put up a 100-point season, so that's fantastic. Uh, Steven Stamkos put up 86 points. Uh, he's become more of a playmaker more recently here and more than the sniper that he used to be, but he's been setting up Kucherov for a lot of goals. So either way, as long as the offense is still coming and the points are coming, there's really uh, nothing to be upset about there, but his, uh, his player... The player that Stamkos is has certainly changed a bit over the years. Braden Point continued to impress, putting up 32 goals and over 60 points this year. He's certainly a fantastic uh, young player for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Great two-way center. Um, so lots to like there about Braden Point. Yandy Gord had a terrific rookie year, putting up 25 goals. So another young player that stepped into the lineup and delivered great results. So, you know, that's another player to be excited about moving forward. Victor Hedman obviously had a Norris Trophy winning type season, putting up 63 points with a plus 32 rating. So, I mean, obviously... Hedman, uh, you know, was recognized last night at the NHL Awards as the top defenseman, so no surprise there. I thought Mikhail Sergachev had a pretty solid rookie year, putting up over 40 points and being plus 11. I know there were certain times in the year when he was uh, either benched or scratched due to his defensive play. And as a young defender, that's bound to happen. Uh, you know, where he's mainly an offensive defenseman, it's not a surprise uh, to see his defensive game still needs some work, but I think there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic and excited about the future with Mikhail Sergachev on the blue line for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Obviously, I thought Andre Vasilevsky had a tremendous year as well. He was nominated for the Vezina Trophy. Unfortunately, he didn't win, but he still put up some tremendous results. He ended up with a 44-17-3 record, a 2.62 goals against average, and a 9.20 save percentage. So uh, Vasilevsky had an excellent season for sure. Uh, there were times in the year where it looked like he might have suffered from a little bit of fatigue. Uh, probably would be wise for Tampa Bay to maybe look into getting a more solid backup. I really thought players like Andre Pilat and Tyler Johnson can deliver a little bit more. Uh, they didn't really have bad years, but I just think they could do a little bit better. But if you look at the amount of offense this team put up, can you just imagine if they got more offense out of guys like Pilat and Johnson? Obviously, they're quite often asked to have different assignments. They're not really uh, required to score more, a whole lot more than what they did. Uh, but I just, I just personally thought that their play declined a little bit offensively. And that you know, that's a minor area. But really, considering how strong this team was. 
to be honest, it was difficult to kind of find areas to kind of pick at for improvement. But uh, if there's anything within their forward group, that, that's what I would select. Now, backup goalies, back to that. I think their backup goaltending certainly needs to improve. Uh, obviously, last year, they at times had Peter Budai, and they also had Louis Domingue uh, after making a trade. Uh, obviously, Budai is not part of the organization anymore, so moving forward, Louis Domingue may be the backup goaltender. They may go in another direction. I'm not sure. Uh, but either way, I think Vasilevsky needs to have a few more nights off during the season, and they need to be more confident in their backup goaltender to be able to do that. Uh, it was pretty clear at times that Vasilevsky kind of suffered a little bit from uh, overuse, overworked, uh, he's obviously tired a bit, um, but you know at the same time the team needs to be confident when they're putting somebody else between the pipes here. Uh, Louis Domingue wasn't too bad; his numbers were better than Budai. We'll see how confident the team is uh, in him moving forward and how much playing time he gets in the next season. As far as transaction that happened throughout the year, obviously, like I said, they picked up Louis Domingue partway through the season. Uh, obviously, he came over from the Coyotes, uh, but obviously the big deal that happened with this team was the trade deadline, picking up J.T. Miller and Ryan McDonough from the New York Rangers in exchange for Vladi Nemestikov and uh, prospect Brett Howden. So obviously that was quite a significant deal. Uh, so we'll see. Obviously McDonough fit in well on the blue line, takes the pressure off Victor Hedman a little bit, having another um, you know top 4D with a lot of experience back there. So that certainly helps. It was a pretty good pickup, and Miller fit in quite well with the forward group. So overall, I'd say Eisman did a fantastic job kind of molding this roster. Uh, so we'll see what he does this offseason if he feels like any tinkering need to be done. But we're going to jump in here to the offseason now. Uh, we're gonna First, before we talk about trades or uh, players that they may be looking to obtain, let's first take a look at their contract situations. They don't have too many UFAs. They really have Chris Kunitz and, uh, and Schuster. They're the two. They're the only two in a roster that are UFAs. Now, Chris Kunitz had a decent year for Tampa. Yeah, by the time next season rolls around, he'll be 39 years old. So there is a possibility Kunitz could retire. There's a possibility Tampa may opt not to sign him. But I do think there's a decent possibility he does come back on another one-year deal with fairly low value to play a bottom six role here to try to win another championship before he calls it quits. Would not surprise me at all. But we'll see there. Under the RFAs, they've got... JT Miller, they've got Cedric Paquette and Slater Cuckoo. So I'm sure all of these guys are going to get signed. It's just a matter of finding the right deal. Obviously, uh, Miller is probably the, the highest profile player out of the bunch. Uh, Cuckoo's, for the most part, but a number seven defenseman. Doesn't get a ton of playing time, but certainly I don't think he's somebody they want to give up on. They want to keep him around. But obviously, they have a lot of decisions to make with their decor moving forward here, uh, which we'll get into momentarily. But all those guys are certainly going to get contracts. It's just a matter of determining the, uh, the proper value in term to get it locked up. Now, as far as players that are eligible for extensions, the list is quite lengthy. So this team is, and Steve Eiserman is going to have a lot of decisions to make moving forward here. Uh, so let's jump in. Now, with ex extension players, the big one is Nikita Kucherov. He's going into the final year of his deal. You know that Nikita Kucherov is going to be looking for some big money and long term. He's had some excellent years. He's really improved his play over the last three or four years, gradually improving, becoming one of the top scoring forwards in the NHL. Uh, he's even surpassed Damkos now as being the top point producer on the team. So obviously, you know, they've got a lot of decisions to make on who they can keep and who they can fit into the long-term plans. But Kucherov by far is the big one. I'm not sure if he's going to be anxious to do an extension this year or wait uh, until the season gets underway or look at it next year. I don't know. Uh, but either way, he's going to be looking for some big money. Up front, they've got youngsters, Yanni Gordon, Braden Point, as well as Corey Conacher. Uh, obviously, you know, those three guys are probably wait and see gourd and point are going to be rfas so there's no big rush they can certainly work out those deals next year uh, and then the next off season is certainly not a big deal Corey conacher they may choose to extend him or they may let him ride it out and see what he can do i mean he's not somebody who's in the lineup all the time but he hasn't done too bad when given the opportunity you know certainly not a top forward but somebody who can play a bottom six role when required so you know, it's probably worth keeping around in the organization, but we'll see how they feel about him beyond one more season. Uh, obviously, they're now on their blue line. There's a lot of decisions to make long-term. Uh, after this season, going into their final year of the contract, we've got Ryan McDonough, Anton Strollman, Braden Colburn, and Dan Girardi. Now, none of these guys are super young. McDonough will be the youngest of the bunch. Team moving forward and some of the big money they need to hand out here um, with some of their other forwards that we just mentioned. You know, Braden Point, if he keeps up his play, he's going to get a big contract. Kucherov's going to get big money. Yanni Gord could get decent money. Like they've got some tough decisions to make. Uh, so there's certainly likely going to be some trades. Uh, they're going to have to move some money out to be able to keep a lot of these top guys. So it's just a matter of determining who they want to sign and keep and who they want to move out. 
I mean, we had speculated before that some players like Tyler Johnson and Andre Pilat might be their trade bait to try to move those contracts off the books to be able to make room for guys like Braden Point and Nikita Kucherov's uh, big extensions. On the back end, obviously, it uh, wouldn't be much of a surprise to see players like Coburn and Girardi be moved along. Uh, I don't see them being extended. I think more than likely they'll uh, they'll either move on to new teams or, or call or quits, depending on where they're at in their careers and how they feel they can keep going or not. But uh, I think they'll be making room for some youth on that back end once those contracts come to an end. Ryan McDonough wouldn't surprise me to see him be extended. Um, Anton Strawman's a possibility as well. But if you have... You throw in Victor Hedman in the bunch there as well. I mean, they got still have a pretty solid decor. So I think that they're more likely going to be trying to inject some youth uh, into that back end. And uh, guys like Girardi and Coburn will be moved along. Now, this team has a ton of prospects as well. They're really well stocked. Uh, they've done a really good job drafting here in the last few years. Uh, they have, a, for example, on the back end getting younger. Well, they've got Cal Foote waiting in the wings. He's the son of former NHL defenseman Adam Foote. A pretty solid uh, junior career. Uh, probably going to play in the American Hockey League this year, or at least uh, part of it. Wouldn't surprise me to see him at least get into a few games, though. But Cal Foote's, you know, probably their top defensive prospect for sure. I mean, they've got some good forward prospects as well with Taylor Radish, uh, Boris Kachuk, Matthew Joseph still in there. I mean, Anthony Sorelli, you kind of still consider him to be a prospect, but he did get into a fair bit of games this year towards the end as well as into the playoffs. Uh, so Sorelli's likely making the big club full-time next year. Wouldn't be a surprise. Uh, or if he's not, he'll probably be the top guy to call up, obviously, depending on how they end up with their roster next year and spots. But he's one of the few guys who they could send down without going through waivers if need be. So it uh, depends on how they fill out their roster, but Sorelli will certainly get a lot of playing time next year for sure. So they've got a ton of uh, ton of things they can do here. They've got some guys that could be trade bait, like I said, like a Johnson or a Palat. They could look to maybe maybe upgrade their backup goaltending, or they may hang with Louis Domingue. They also have a good young prospect goalie in Connor Ingram coming up as well. I'm not sure he's quite NHL ready, but he's put up some fantastic numbers in the American Hockey League. So at some point in time here, whether it be this year or next, they may opt to make him the backup goaltender. Um, bring him up and get him some games. So that's probably the longer term plan would be my guess if he keeps pro progressing the way that he has been. Uh, so they got lots of prospects. They got some big decisions to make with some contract extensions as well. So the Steve Eisenman is going to be a busy man. He's got lots to decide. So let me know down in the comments how you think Steve Eisenman should handle all these contracts. There's a lot of big decisions to be made here. You're not going to be able to keep everybody. So who do you keep and who do you maybe consider trading? Either way, the Tampa Bay Lightning should be well positioned to have another fantastic year next season and once again be a contender to win the Atlantic Division and have an excellent shot at making it back to the Stanley Cup Finals. Now, if you're new to the channel, hope you consider subscribing. We cover all 31 NHL teams. There's plenty of content here for all hockey fans to enjoy. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button as well. As always, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time.